Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Team <laughs> secrets turn to ban. Hellraisers turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Team Secrets turn to ban. Hellraiser's turn to pick. The PGL Dota 2 open. Secret facing off against Hellraisers. I'm Lyrical, joined as well by Aosin. Aosin, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Secret. Just uh, <laughs> watching Shark Tank. <laughs> watching Shark Tank? Yeah, I mean, that's what I do in between breaks. I watch Shark Tank. It's, it's, that's... it's, it's addicting. Yeah, it's it's always interesting. It's uh kind of kind of edu educational in my opinion. Edutainment, Five sure. Remaining. I'd uh invent a anger management pill so all the all Dota players can enjoy the game. <laughs> I think I don't even think the puck was the issue for them. I think they were just outmaneuvered and outplayed like throughout the entire game. They were just so pressured. I think it could have been something other than the puck and it still would have had the same outcome. It was just like between the clockwork, the bane, and actually it was, so these are the four heroes that made life impossible for them, right? There was a brewmaster who had a really good start, and then the puck who obviously had safe lane, so he had a good start as well. And then Yapsor with some ridiculous farm on his clockwork, and then a bane. Like all four of these heroes just make it so difficult for you to move around the map and get farm, right? And yeah. then you look at Hellraisers, they're so, Team fight oriented. You have a Void, you have a Venomancer, an Earthshaker. None of these heroes can do anything without the other one. And Team Secret just kind of played around that remaining. and farmed the entire map, built up this giant lead, and there's nothing Hellraisers could really do. Yeah. True enough. Um, and starting off the second game as well now, taking a Brewmaster and a Rubik opening. I mean, that was one of the problems that we saw was that it did feel like Brew got a, a lot down there in that bottom lane and now most likely going to be playing in the top lane. It kind of shuts off some of the heroes that you can play in the safe lane for Hellraisers. Did you feel like that was a really good matchup for the Brew against the Veno? I actually, I'm actually kind of surprised at how much he was able to get. Um, I think if Brewmaster is left alone, there's really little he can do in that lane. But I think the supports made his life like Five much easier. I think remaining. a lot of credit definitely goes to Yapsor as well as Puppy for protecting the Brewmaster down in that bottom lane. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll, we'll see what Puppy's hero ends up being as the game goes on too. It's going to be uh, the J4 Disruptor. This was a classic for him as well. He played it a ton through the qualifiers leading up to TI. Uh, got to cast a couple of those games when they were happening. Um... But I think the thing that we should talk about is that Team Secret feeling comfortable going for a first pick Rubik. Uh, Yapsor, he's just he plays that hero a lot. He he, <laughs> he knows how to play the hero. Hellraisers turn to ban. Yeah, I've uh, heard that guy's pretty good at that hero. Yeah. I think Disruptor is usually picked up for Brewmaster. It's like 
somewhat of a counter. It's kind of cool because if you manage to catch him out, right, you can static storm him. He's not going to be able to split. And alternatively, if he secrets. blinks Turn in and claps and then ultis, you can always glimpse him back. And if you catch him with the glimpse while he's casting his ulti, his ulti actually splits where the glimpse ends. So oh, really? Yeah, so it's it's kind of weird when you try to time it with Brewmaster, but I'm tr I'm 100% certain that DK Phobos knows how to play around it. I'm Ten I wouldn't be surprised if he remaining. just never falls for any of these kind of tricks. Yeah. Hell well, and now it's going to be the Doom band out as well. Um I wonder if they're going to go for like an Enchantress again. That was Well, well the thing is is that when they ended up doing Enchantress earlier, it was with a uh it was in the off lane more often than not. It was uh, either Fata playing it in the other qualifiers that we were casting or um, Hestijo playing it. And with the Brewmaster already taken, it seems unlikely that they would go Enchantress unless Puppy's playing it. Um, they have so many different people that can play that hero. I mean, last time they ran it, they had Fata play the Pugna in the off lane and then Ace played it in the safe lane. So That's a good point. They, they just like to move everything around all the time. It's just so confusing and remaining. makes it extremely difficult for their opponents to kind of guess where people are going to be mm -hmm. in terms of uh, laning. Yeah. Well, the other ban was of the Juggernaut. Maybe a little bit concerned that Secret are trying to end this game early. Uh, also, keep in mind, everybody, that there's more qualifiers going on on the other channels. Uh, there was some talk going on about whether or not Navi... Hellraiser's turn to pick Enchantress. And uh, it's like we discussed, it's just so hard to tell where this hero is going to be going. You never know. I honestly wouldn't even be surprised if they put her mid lane. Although I think Ten it's going to cut down on her effectiveness, but you have to kind of make a, a guess Five now. You know, if it's going to be a support or an off laner or even that safe lane farming enchantress that we've seen them run before that's a that's a pretty good point i mean they had it for a 1v1 matchup uh, it was niqua who played in that matchup first time he got destroyed in the safe lane on radiant side yeah. the next time they played it they made him go off lane yeah and then uh off lane on radiant was much better than the Ten uh seconds remaining. wait actually no he was off lane dire first yeah right he was off lane dire first then he was off lane Five radiant remaining. off lane dire was much worse than his off lane radiant because on the off lane radiant Hell side he was able to catch to those two camps and just jungle those uh, instead of uh fighting enchanters in late team secret whoa this is super bold. Team Secret taking the Bounty Hunter with the fourth pick into a Drow Ranger. Now, you can get up close to the Drow, true, but this is a lineup that's built to push and built to take towers early and built to five-man. I That's at least how I see it. Let me know if, if I'm saying something incorrect there. Is that at all scary for you, taking the Bounty Hunter into that? Five seconds uh, I think it's actually I think it's actually okay um, with the heroes that they have. I mean, they... Team Secret, they definitely know how to play around this this hero right now, so I'm not exactly worried for them. They still have one more pick as well. I feel like once we see what this last pick is going to be like, where everything will come together. Yeah. Razors turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. They're Five stumped. seconds remaining. What do we ban? What co what core can we ban? Hellraiser's turn to pick. Oh yeah, definitely. They're gonna ban out the alchemist. Interesting. I'm trying to think of what would be good here. 
Actually, I feel like this would be a pretty good invoker game. Yeah, I think it's a good, pretty Ten pretty decent game for, for mid one to play invoker. I think uh, like the way he plays invoker is just like five seconds. Remaining. He's just so good at fighting with that hero. Um, I think he'll be able to farm up a very quick scepter and then just constantly fight with his team instead of just farming. Yeah, not exactly the greatest of setups for Sunstrike, but he'll be the one to provide the the right click in like the early game and then. Once he has the scepter, he'll be able to, you know, do all the fancy invoker stuff. Get those levels up, etc. And they don't have like great roaming yet. Um, that's what this clockwork is going to attempt to do. I would imagine. Uh, well, no, actually, clockwork. Yeah, clockwork four. So he's probably going to be heading mid and trying to help out whenever possible against. Uh, I'm assuming that it's going to be Drow safe lane. Maybe not. Maybe with the disruptor, it's too hard to do that. Like, whatever lane the Disruptor in is going to be probably pressured pretty heavily, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that's actually a really good point. I think they might actually commit to a dual lane with uh, Drow Ranger mid and then the Venomancer safe lane. Oh, one second left. What is it? Choose your hero. What? That's not cool. I mean, I, I guess he's going to be there for the engagements, so, though. You know, you can just uh, keep farming away, make a split, TP him in, and then go fight. Huh. Do you like it? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to say. I don't know Arc Warden uh, very well at all, so just going to have to see how he does it and learn from it. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly a hero that's able to, you know, split push really effectively, hold high ground as well. I think that's probably the main reason that they're taking it here is like this is a push lineup from Hellraisers and trying to siege from the low ground with the Drow Ranger not getting caught out. And so you throw down Magnetic Field and they're not going to be able to hit the tower. So it's, I guess the, the way that they're going with it. Well, that is a good point. It is actually so frustrating to try to siege as range against that that uh, bubble. I don't even remember what it's called. Magnetic field. <laughs> Magnetic field. Yeah. Right. I'll go with bubble. <laughs> I like it. it. It it more clearly demonstrates what the ability is about. You know, pause or something. All right, it's taking a little while to load in. Load in. All right. Game number two. And Hellraiser's needing a win here. Otherwise, they are going to be dropped out of the qualifiers for the PGL Minor. And the normal pause to start it. J4 needing some time to think about things. So This is, is going to be another rough early game for, uh, for Hellraiser's. I feel like Secret are just so good at the laning phase. Yeah. Um, where do you think is going to be, like, the biggest issue? Is it, like, the Disruptor and, I guess, uh, Venno lane? Do you think that's going to be a problem? Or do you think that, like, Ace is just going to dominate the Batrider down bottom? Where, where are you looking at as uh, potential areas for concern? I think with, uh, with these lane setups, I, I feel like there's no lane that's actually safe. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, because if you look at their, their cores, right, it... it Arc Warden is actually a pretty good core when it comes to like utilizing rotations because of how strong the uh, the flux as well as spark wraith is, and then yeah. Enchantress, she's not the greatest, but she's not bad either. Enchant is actually a very powerful slow. You know, at level one, it's fifty five percent, and it slows for two and a quarter seconds. So that's like a really strong disable as well. And then if you look in the off lane, uh, Brewmaster also kind of in the same area just provides a very strong disable in the thunderclap slow as well as drunken haze if you need it. Yeah. So there's there's definitely setup in every lane. Right. Oh, well, Milan getting his uh, his dance on. And Puppy is just going to place down a couple of these wards deep, sit out here, see if he can snipe a courier. This shouldn't happen uh, at this level. If you're playing, you should know. J4 um, was thinking about stealing the rune, maybe? And then they don't 
end up blocking? They'll, they'll get the block eventually. I wonder if there is some talk going on there. Alright, the courier's coming out. Oh god, is Puppy actually going to get this? Alright, they're holding it on the high ground. Does he know? I wish that scans could check for couriers. Oh man. How OP would that be? It'd be uh, really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> there would actually be a reason to have multiple couriers. Yeah. Just go park them somewhere and hide them. Well, they're going to end up hitting mid lane. That was a Sentry Ward drop down. Flux is there as well. Kaiser taking a beating. A puppy. Just going to have to back out now before he takes too much more damage. But mid one can keep the harassment on. Already three and one for a piece. This is actually so scary because Bounty Hunter actually didn't buy anything. He made Yapser buy everything. And because of that, he gets to pick up the early PMS. And with this early PMS, he's just like so damn tanky. Yeah. It's so it's actually so difficult for Hellraisers to trade efficiently with him. Oh, and he's gonna end up heading back home and probably picking up a TP scroll, going to another lane. Milan trying to do whatever he can to Phobos, but he doesn't have cogs right now. And in the meantime, Disruptor not really Bambo. able to offer that much. Is Bambo in trouble? Yeah, oh no. How did that happen? Just a lift? He just he just got caught out. He was uh playing a little too far up. Not really respecting uh, the damage that can come out from Enchantress as well as Rubik, and he just gets lifted. And he was only level one as well, so there's no uh, Firefly. Well, up top here, Puppy trying to play cleanup. Can he get within range? Too slowed by the Gale. Now he is going to have to walk away. He does have Invis back off cooldown very shortly, and well, they don't quite get the Cogs. Well, there's the Cogs pushback. All right, they get something at least. I don't think he's going to mind too much. Mid lane, Kaiser, he's going to be pulled back in and killed. Also, Yapsor making the moves around the map and finding kills. Very nicely done. This Bat Rider versus Enchantress lane is kind of difficult, though, for the, for the Enchantress. She has pretty terrible turn rate, so if you manage to stack up enough times on her, you can just kind of firefly over her and do, do some donuts on her. Yeah. We'll have to keep our eyes on that. Mid one mid is level four right now and uh, a little bit out CSing the drow. Actually has nine denies versus her nine last hits. Yapsor is moving again and they got the slow onto Bambo. The lift is there if they wanted to use it, but he is just going to be able to back out. But Bambo gets away. Enchantress has 17 stick charges now. It's going to be. A little more difficult for Bambo to find the opportunity to get kills in. Gonna go straight to the jungle. So, it is all of the CS kind of favor and secret right now, and oh, it's it's looking a little bit rough. Uh, I don't know. Is there any type of like rotation that you make at all? It it feels like they're kind of stuck in the lanes that they're in right now. I think they definitely are going to be stuck in their lanes. There's really not too much you can do about it. Disruptor doesn't offer too much. Kind of have to protect your your Drow Ranger. It's really important that you're able to keep her alive. And yeah. if you look at the Clockwork, Clockwork's only level two. Doesn't have the battery assault. So with Cog and Rocket, you don't really offer too much. I think you should get level three first, and then if you get level three, then you can actually provide some kind of backup to your uh, your Bat Rider, for example. I think that's uh, something you can pair up with. Yeah. Oh, nope, mid one silenced in the mid lane. Does still hold on to his salve, which is he's gonna pop now. And well, 19 and 12 for mid one versus 12 and 6 for Drow. Drow is certainly hurting in this. Ace been able to be left alone. Level three on the Bat Rider. We'll see if he can make anything happen against Enchantress, but she is level five, and as you said, those 17 sick charges keeping her alive and well. J4. Is there gonna be any kind of follow up? It doesn't look like it. Radiant. And he is poor too. Broke is a joke right now. They scan out Bambo. They know he's here. Bambo just taking the long <laughs> route. <laughs> he actually got hit by the tower. They got him. This is going to end up being another kill. They can pull him into the tower, possibly trying to run him down. But I mean, Ace is really fast. Let's be real here. Well, he has to be careful though. 
I think he has to run away. Yeah. Good play there by Bambo. Able to get himself out in mid one in the mid lane though. Ends up finding a kill on a Kaiser with Puppy's help, oh, and now they should come in as well. 3-3 well. is in trouble. He's going to end up dying. A double kill from mid one is... They were trying to help, and... Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Man. So you can you can kind of see just how annoying Arc Warden is in lane. Like, the Flux and Spark Wraith do so much damage, and with the help of any support, it's just like a very straightforward setup. Yeah. 2,000 net worth lead right now. Actually, almost 3,000. They're going to go again. Oh, pull him away. Stick charges. Bambo, no. He goes down. The tower finds the kill. And in the meantime, Bambi is able to just wait for all that damage and Firefly to run away. Puppy will be able to get this regen rune if he wants to. Or just let Milan take it. And they head away. It's a little too greedy there by Bambo. Sometimes, you know, you get you get clouded by the uh, fact that you have six stacks on the uh, on your enemy. You know, uh -huh. I understand that feeling. You just want to run them oh, over, yeah. but unfortunately, the chance is a little too tanky. And Bambo uh oh, too Kaiser is he getting? That's three uphill misses. He's still going down though, and now four heroes. Well, three heroes mid, maybe three and a half since he got Arc Warden stubble. And they end up finding another double kill for mid one. 5 0 oh, and 0 oh, with 33 last hits at six and a half minutes ish. This is a good game for Arc Warden. 7 to 1. Once again, Secret continuing this trend of uh, absolutely stomping the laning phase. Um. And it's just so hard for Hellraiser to do anything about it because you're. Your comeback mechanic is basically having Disruptor 6 or having 6 on Clockwork to find someone or a Blink Dagger on Bad Rider, but that is not going to be in the works for quite some time. And I feel like at this rate, the lead is going to be so large that it doesn't even matter at that point. Even if you do have the initiation tools or the pickoff tools, it's just not enough. And you got to keep our eyes across these other maps too. like. Mid one here is going to show up and they force the Batrider away. And in the other lane, DK Phobos can kind of just stay here against these two heroes. And with Puppy coming in and DK Phobos having split, there's a very real possibility they just kill them both off. I am so concerned right now for Hellraisers. And it looks like they're going to go now on to 3 3. They pop the Brew ulti, the rock comes out. They've got the extra little bit of damage. They lift up the Disruptor. In the meantime, Milan is going to die in the mid lane. So they're going to find three kills here. As uh, I just, I don't know how you stop this. It is so hard to deal with this. There's the clap. Double kill for Phobos on top of the Milan kill. Maybe they find Puppy. Yeah, this will be at least something. Puppy dies. Something at least. DK Phobos showing why he is uh, such a good brewmaster. That was some great control on the pandas. Like, there's actually Radiant's so little delay in between every attack. ability that he casts. Yeah. The boulder, the Ventura cyclone, as well as the uh, the wind walk on the storm panda. Wind walk, that's the name of it. I wonder if they have to change it, though, because that's the name of it in uh, Warcraft 3. So I'm uh. curious. I don't remember what it's called in oh, Dota okay. 2. I feel like they must have changed it. <laughs> Well, nine minutes in, 10 to two, and everybody's just gonna take a break for a second, figure out what they wanna do. 5,000 gold lead, 4,000 experience. Midas about to be completed for mid one at under 10 minutes. That is kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, a little really bit. Not good. A little scary. I mean, you look at it, and Brewmaster almost has more CS than the Drow Ranger. Yeah, that's uh, kind of how it is. I think you can't really blame him either. I don't think the lane is actually easy by any means. Right. I think Arc Warden already is already it's already a tough opponent for the Drow Ranger and the uh, Disruptor. You throw in the Bounty Hunter who starts with the PMS and. 
a Yapsor Rubik. I mean, none of these lanes are safe. Well, we'll have to see how it progresses. We do have the Seder Tormentor down here. They're going to try and push this lane, maybe, with, uh, or they'll just farm out the jungle. That's the thing, is, like, Secret have also been really good about not trying to overstep and pretty consistently making the right decision. Definitely. They know when to take objectives and when not to risk it. Yeah. Just go farm and out farm or go for pickoffs and then and then make a push happen. Like they're very efficient with their movements. More so than other teams that they've played so far. Alright, this is a big moment though. J4 walking in, only level 4 himself. They throw it in the connect field. Mid 1's gonna get caught. There's the silence, but Yapsor, he gets the lift. The stun onto 2. Can mid 1 get out of here? He lays down the magnetic oh, field! My god. Oh god, is he gonna end up going down regardless though? No, there's gonna be the glimpse. They pull him back in. Mid 1 starting to fall. They are gonna finally bring him down. He did get that Midas delivered. Bambo saving the day just barely. They really needed that. It would have been so bad for them if they didn't even manage to get the even one kill there. All right. Hellraiser's back on the board. Uh, be it ever so slightly. They have a uh, disruptor at level six now too, so static storm going to be pretty important in these upcoming fights. But unfortunately for Clockwork, he doesn't have a six yet, but we hiding in the trees. He sold J4. Want to go for this? Yeah, he's looking for an opportunity here. If he could get a good static storm down, he's thinking about it. They're pump faking the ulti. Kaiser walking forward. They get the gust out, but ah, looks like secret. I doubt they walk forward again into this. I think they know something's up. It's a little risky. And Rubik has wards now too, so he can just sit mid and farm this all out. Yeah, level 4 ward stolen by Rubik is such value right now. Win. They find mid one. Okay. This is a they pull back in. He has 11 stick charges, but doesn't want to use them. Knows that it would all be for naught. So mid one getting caught out a couple times. Highest value here in the game. That being said, Yapsor now. Going to be able to start placing these wards aggressively and maybe even take down the tower. It's going to Yapsor. He pulls them, but they get the tower, and now the pull back in. Yapsor going to get caught. Bambo trying to find that kill, and they are going to be able to do it. So another one going the way of Hellraisers. Not too bad. Definitely not, you know, the greatest thing to have to lose your tower for that one, but. At least in a walk away free. Oh. Yapsor doesn't have wards now, too. That's the other nice part about it. Um, Puppy, he's gotten his level six. Mid one has had a little bit of time to himself to farm now and can use the Midas's. Midas. Midas C? What's no, the. I, I don't actually know. <laughs> He's going to be going back for the uh, Maelstrom as well. Yeah, I think this is pretty much the go-to Arc Warden build now. Helps you farm really quickly, and uh, I think you go like Mjolnir, Hurricane Tyke. Mm. Or maybe a little greedier build. Maybe you go for... Radiant I was going to say Diffusal, but I don't, I don't... Actually, I don't think you should be so greedy. Just pick up the, the Force Staff afterwards that you can force your way out of the cogs and Dyer's not really put yourself at risk. Yeah. Radiant structures are fortified. I think Ace showed himself for a second. They're moving into the jungle right now, hoping to find somebody. And it looks like they will run into the Brewmaster. They have vision of him. Hookshot connects on to Yapsor, actually. He's going to pull him outside of the cog. That's a good stun, but he stole Static Storm. Now lays it down on top of the other ones. I believe they got the silence up before he could put down the Static Storm. Meanwhile, the Venom ulti comes out as well. They throw it down now. Going to be able to take down that Drow Ranger. And well, with Ace dealing the damage with the impetus shots, that's going to be more than enough. Four are going to fall for the price of the brew. Almost five. Venom gets away barely. I wonder if this spirit hits him. Uh, it's going to hit him. Look, it's chasing him. Get there. Where is it at? I don't it's, see it. Uh, oh, hey. Tier two. Yeah, there he is. Let me see if I can get a good angle on this. Oh, it's coming! Oh, Run away! 
They got him. <laughs> All right. 8,000 net worth now. And with a couple of those being track kills, that was a big moment in this game. It felt like maybe there, if you have Hellraisers, like, killing off more than just the Brewmaster, things start looking a little bit better. But when in an engagement like that, it's pretty tough. Oh, Dust, not quite on the mark. And like you said, winning it with so many track kills, you even though they're so far ahead because of track, they still managed to get, come out on top with like 2,000 gold. Yeah. And that that is rough. All right. 15 minutes in. 17 to 6. Brewmaster taking down towers like it ain't no thing. Gonna be going for a similar build to last game. Doesn't get the doesn't get the blads first, but picks up a blink dagger. He's looking pretty good right now. Yeah. Quite good indeed. Mid one mid one finishes his blink or sorry, his maelstrom. He's gonna go for a blink dagger next. This will be pretty cool to see. Really? I double blink. Why not? I mean, it's cool. It's, it's good for fighting. Uh, yeah. I don't think it'll help your main one farm faster, and it'll help your your clone uh, fight a little better as well. So. Pretty huh? good stuff. Well, Seventeen to six. Where do you see the next couple minutes going for Secret? Are we gonna start to see uh, maybe like a movement towards Roche or something? Wait, before that, they can see that Secret are out of position with these two heroes. This could be a big two kill. Oh, they scan though. There's the hook shot. They got one. Yapsor, he has Static Storm still there. It's double Static Storm action. One on top of the other, and Enchanter is still living through this for the moment. 17 stick charges, staying alive. Barely, just barely, but is gonna eventually fall. Puppy in the meantime, also gonna go down, and Yapsor trying to kill him off as well. They do take down Sexy Bambo. Mid one, trying to turn this onto Milan. Can they kill him off? The right clicks as well as that Fade Bolt, more than enough. But now J4 getting chased as well. They're looking for Kaiser, they get the lift up with the Cyclone, and now they're going to be able to kill off the Disruptor, and most likely play cleanup onto Kaiser as well. Silence is there, then DK Phobos able to, well, almost keep himself alive. That is but so unlucky. 3-3, <laughs> three, three, no more lift. I mean, that wasn't that bad. They managed to get two. I think that's actually okay for Hellraisers. Yeah. Considering they're behind 9k, I think that's, that's actually okay. It was like the perfect initiation point, too. That's the big thing. That should help. Still very unlucky for DK Phobos. He turns around, drunken hazes Kaiser, and still gets hit through all that evasion. <laughs> yeah. I think some of that was the tower, too, but um, it's rough. So how do you deal with mid one at this point? He has Midas, Boots of Travel, Maelstorm. Like, what's, what's the big answer to Arc Warden? Because I feel like whenever people play against him, there's just sometimes this this problem with, like, you, he gets out of control and you can't do anything to stop him and sends his clones off. There's nothing to deal with it. Puppy, in the meantime, going to break a TP of Bambos. You uh, definitely need... They have answers. It's just whether or not they have the damage to follow up. Like, you can catch him out with a Bad Rider or even... I'd say Clockwork is better than the disruptor but disruptor can also kind of catch him out so they have ways to find him but whether or not they have ways to actually kill him Daya's off when they do find is him is a different attack. story right because he has so many different heroes uh, that can protect him i'm sure eventually we're going to see four snaps as well so Radiant's not going to be an easy target to find we also have a blink blads done for phobos so even if they do manage to find him around the rest of his team, they've got all this other stuff just in the skills, not just the eventual force staffs to help make it difficult. Um, he's also queuing up an AC and then eventually an Aghanim Scepter. Bottom lane is being pushed in, though, and this is what they need to deal with. Kaiser in 3-3, pressuring towers with wards as well as the right clicks. Look at how quickly it's dying. Here's one TP's in with the uh, illusion, and it looks like Secret want to fight this. See if they can find anyone. Oh, they got the vision. They are going to end up getting the purge onto 3-3. Flux is there as well. He is caught in some trouble. Turnaround coming. Puppy is caught as well. They are going to be able to bring down 3-3, it looks like. They end up stealing a Gale as well as 
Oh, nothing else for the moment. That they're chasing down Bambo. They've got the well, Brulings chasing after him as well. Kaiser, the lone one left standing, and not for long. They end up losing Puppy on secret, but Ace gets a triple, and everybody falls for Hellraisers. That is not how you want to take a fight. I, they, I mean, they didn't even use Static Storm. Yeah. Secret were just spaced apart so well that there was really no way that the Hellraiser were going to be able to fight. Especially since they were against these smoke team secrets there. So even though they wanted to turn it around, they didn't know exactly where they were. I wonder if at that point it's better for 3-3 to just turn around and like ulti and make them kill him so the rest of his team can get out. You know what I mean? That's that's actually a pretty solid strategy, but I mean, obviously, in the heat of the moment, it's, it's not that easy to come up with a strategy like that, right? Right. I think your initial thought is just to make a run for it. Yeah. Well, Arc Warden, the Blink Dagger is done now, so his ability to move around the map and sort of even be further elusive uh, is increased. We'll see mid one push out these lanes and. Start to pressure the tier two towers around the map. So yeah, if anything else is coming out, Dyer's Puppy has a hood. Are scanning. Yeah, so we're gonna go for the Yules first, then the Blink. Seems to be able to go to the Arc Warden mid, they jump in, but it's actually only the real Enchantress. The other mid one is out and away from the rest of them, and. Well, that's just going to be Enchantress getting out of there. They also throw it on the magnetic field, and Milan's going to get lifted up. Bambo in trouble. They're going to start to fall. Kaiser getting ran down. He can't do anything to mid one. Magnetic field, he literally took no damage at all. And again, a five-man wipe. Secret are just handling Hellraisers right now. This is starting to look brutal. It's the power of the bounty hunter and... We, we can't we always mention it but secret they they just do so well in the early game and they're so good at just building up this lead over and over again so how do you deal with this because it feels like no matter what heroes they're taking is it just that they're always prioritizing heroes that can dominate the lanes i mean that's that's definitely a big thing about it is that they always have these this very strong early game presence they win the lanes so hard to the point that even though the draft looks like it's not going to work out well in the mid lake game, it just ends up working because of just how much net worth they have over their enemy. All right. Well, Mjolnir is now done as well. And if it wasn't difficult before, it's certainly difficult now as Bambo going to need to back out of there before things get even worse. He does have Firefly, but they decide they want to fight. Uh, duh. I don't know about that one. Uh, Yapsor is oh, now going to lift it back more. in. Oh, God. They end up being the silence off as well. Dodging away the venomous poison nova, excuse me, is going to end up going out. But I'm not sure if that's going to be enough either. Drow is going to fall. This game is, like, almost over. The GG called. They're done. They're just getting stomped right now. They just they look so powerless. They have no answer. They got secreted. I, this is what Secret's been doing through these qualifiers. They just, I, yeah. I, we need to see Secret against like a, a tier one team, and it might happen in this next round of the playoffs. Uh, I don't believe that the playoff match is going to be happening today, 